tea porridge. Porridge in the morning. Golden harvest. Tastes so good with different toppings. On the stove it heats right through. I eat it with a bowl and spoon. Mm. Hello everybody. Welcome to today's online field trip all about tasty porridge. I'm Sam and today I'm joined by two experts. We have Richard who's a porridge expert. Hi Richard. Hello. And we also have Peter, who's our expert, Miller. Peter. Great stuff. Give me a wave and a cheer in your classrooms, children, if you're looking forward to learning all about OT porridge today. <laughs> Great stuff. As you can see, I'm in a traditional water mill today. This is Bunbury Mill. It's absolutely gorgeous here. It's really picturesque. As you can see, we've got the uh, the water, the mill lake next door. We've got little ducks that are quacking and waddling past as I speak. It is so lovely. We've come all the way to the northwest of the country to a county called Cheshire to learn all about one of our favourite breakfast cereals, Oaty Porridge. But before we learn all about that, let's meet the schools we have taking part today. Let's go to Greenway Primary School first of all. They're in Cardiff, and it's Mrs. Donnelly's class that's taking part. Hello, children. Hello. <laughs> Lovely to have you with us. And let's go out to Herefordshire now. We've got uh, Maiden Primary School taking part. Hi, Miss <laughs> Let's go to All Saints Primary School now in Barry, where we've got Mr. Williams' class taking part. <laughs> Wow, nice and loud there. An enthusiastic bunch, Richard. They really are. We have lots of fun today, aren't we? Lots of fun. There's lots to talk about, lots to see. Um, but today we're going to uh, uh, talk about the um, traditional oat milling method rather than the big industrial way to mill oats today. Great. I can't wait to see this old stone mill in action. It is really beautiful, as I said as well. We're on the top floor of the mill at the moment. This is where the whole process starts. Because just to the side of me here is a door, which is where the bags of oats would be pulled through, where the farmer would pull up with his horse and cart and then attach it to the road. And as you can see, Peter pulling in a big bag of oats in here as well. This is where the whole process would start and they would be cleaned. And we're going to watch the whole process from then on. It's going to be really, really exciting to see. Here's the way if we're excited to learn about the whole process that porridge oats goes through. Lots of people there, lots of people there. And that's what we're starting to basically call it. Well, porridge, in the UK, we talk about porridge being oats. But all around the world, people are in different formats. They can use it with rice, they can make it with corn, wheat. But today, we're going to concentrate on oats. So that's what we can do in the UK. And is it just oats and water that we need to make porridge? No, you can make it with water or milk or a combination of both. I like it with milk, I don't like it too much with oats. Yeah, I like it being more and more food. I think you just put oats out the field and eat the crop. Good question, Sam. No, you can't. This is an example of how oats grow in the field. They grow about waist height. You get the stem here and the little four little heads at the top. Now, each little head has the oats on it and the little shell on it, which is like a coat, a little steel coat, which protects the oats inside. The oats get inside the whole of the oats, and that's the bit that we know here in the bit of milk to make into porridge. Great, so I love that, and that's the right name. So the inside of the oats is a great. Yes, it's interesting. But it is taste. <laughs> it's a little taste. And um, great stuff. And of course, we're here in the mill in uh, the UK. Um, can we make much porridge in the UK? Can we go in the UK? Yeah, we do. Oats work and the hardy weather. They work again in the sunshine and the wind, but uh, they're on the hardy weather. Uh, and we can go all over the UK, and it's great being where we are in the centre of the UK, because we can bring all the grain in, we can mill it, and send it back out to the shop, we can buy it for the breakfast. Lovely. And when I think of porridge, I think of Scotland, yes, Scottish porridge oats. Is it more of a tradition of Scotland? It is, yes, it's been milled up there and eaten there, grown up there for centuries. Uh, in fact, today they put it into haggis, uh, they even put it into mashed potatoes in certain parts of Scotland. Oh, wow. I don't know if I've ever had mashed potatoes with oats. Did I tell the difference? Yes, it actually does. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
about college and oats already today, but I know that lots of our schools have been learning using all the resources and information that we have on our website about college. So let's um, put it to the test now. Let's go over to Greenway Primary School in college to find out the most interesting facts you already know about oats. Jim Jim has said that he's found out that oats and porridge are very healthy for you. So Greenway Primary School have learned that oats and porridge are very healthy for you. Oh, that really helps. Very healthy. Good. That's good learning. Let's go to uh, Maybury Primary School now to find out what the most interesting fact they've learned about oats and porridge so far. Hello, my name is Kura. My fact is that Russia produces the most amount of oats in the world and they call porridge kasha. So maybe primary school have learned, have learned that uh, it's Russia that, that makes the most oats in the world. Uh, yes, then and Canada and then the UK. Great stuff. Great learning children. You've obviously been paying lots of attention and learning all about porridge and oats. Uh, in your classes before today. Let's learn some more now. This is more about porridge and in its history. OT porridge, our favourite breakfast cereal. People have been eating porridge for thousands and thousands of years. In fact, it's one of the oldest foods we eat. Humans first started farming in the Neolithic period, which began around 10,000 years ago. They began to grow grains, such as oats and barley, but before they learned how to make bread from the grain, they mixed it with water and made a porridge-like paste, which they then cooked over fire. Isn't it amazing to think that Neolithic people ate some of the same foods as us? And they weren't the only ones. Porridge was eaten all over Europe by invading Roman and Norman armies, as well as the seafaring Vikings. And in Victorian times, poor people who lived in the workhouses would have been served a thin, watery meal of porridge, known as gruel, just like Oliver Twist. Poorer people in Scotland would have eaten porridge three times a day, up until a couple of hundred years ago. And it would not have remained a daily meal throughout history, had it not been so very nutritious. It contains lots of important minerals and some vitamins, as well as lots of fibre. Porridge releases its energy into our bodies slowly, so it keeps us full up for longer. It contains iron, which reduces tiredness and keeps our immune systems healthy. Magnesium and phosphorus, which help to keep us full of energy. Zinc and biotin, which help keep our hair, skin and nails tip-top. And it contains potassium, which is good for our muscles. It's not only tasty, but also extremely good for us. So now you have learned how important porridge has been throughout history, and just how many different people across Europe have eaten it for thousands of years. You can think about all of these amazing facts when you have your warm bowl of tasty porridge oats for breakfast in the morning. Enjoyed that. I can't believe we've been eating porridge for thousands of years. And my favourite fact is that the Romans and the Vikings used to eat porridge as well. That's great, isn't it? Give me a wave and a two in your classrooms if you enjoyed learning that fact about the Romans and the Vikings. <laughs> Peter, who's our expert on milling. Now, Peter, this is absolutely huge to stone you. Is this what was used yeah. for the milling? Well, yes, Sam. This is a pair of millstones. There are two of them. The one I've got my foot on is called the bed stone, and that just sits on the floor. And there's this axle or shaft that comes up through the middle of it, and that goes round and round. It's driven by the gear wheels underneath, which I think we'll have a look at. And then the runner stone here is the one that's going to actually move. The two stones together weigh about the same as a car. Wow. A family car, they're, they're heavy. And this runner stone turns over and sits on top of the axle and it gets driven round by the gearing. Great, there's lots and lots of lines in here, is yeah, that what helps? These are grooves that are cut on, on, the, on the stones. And we've got a little model here 
to show you how the grooves work. Okay. So that's a model of the bed stone with the flat lines that are grooves on it. That's the runner stone with mm -hmm. the grooves on that. And they fit together like that. And as the top stone turns, you can see the grooves cut across each other. Uh, so it actually chops the oats as it goes through. And also it's pushing towards the outside all the time. If you look oh. at the lines, Okay, it's so just pushing to the outside. All the oatmeal would be moving and then would eventually drop off the side. The oats goes into the centre, moves to the outside and it comes out. Oh, and we'll stuff. see that over there in a minute. Well, it's a completely so huge pieces. So how do you power these? Well, about 2,000 years ago, people worked out you could use water power to do it. So we've got a water wheel over here. Can we go and have a look yeah, at the water wheel? Yeah, Okay. So here's the wheel down here. Wow. Right? And at the moment there's no water going, or very little water going. When we open the sluice and let the water onto it, the weight of the water will build up and start to turn it. Okay. Would you like to start it? I'd love to have a go. go. Yeah, why not? So I just put Move it down, lever, do I? Pull that lever down okay. there. And the I've water will the power. start to flow. There we go. And you hear the noise on it Ooh. starting up. Now look at the water here. is a hopper containing the oats and then from there it goes down this sloping shoe down here and it drops into the middle of the millstone through the hole that's called the eye and it comes out at the edge and if you look down here you can see the oatmeal coming out around the edge and that's that's the actual oatmeal that's coming out around there and then it gets carried around by the action of the wheel to a chute that's over at the back here and it goes down the chute to the flower sack that's underneath in the basement. I think we've got a clip of the, um, the meal going through into the basement there. Fantastic, that's yeah. great. And this mill has been working and doing this for 175 years. Uh, 175 that? years, that's right. But there's been a mill here on this site for over a thousand years, we know for sure. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. So we have to see what is produced from this uh, milling process, but not all oats are produced the same, are they? No, they aren't. The, um, the oats that people are probably more familiar with is this um, porridge oats, and that's made by taking the actual groats, that's the, the oat grains, which is that stuff, and squeezing it between rollers so that it crushes it flat to make the oat plates. Oh, okay. But that process was only invented in 1877. Oh. So when this mill was built in 1840, that didn't exist. And what we have, well, we've seen, we grind the, the, the oats between the stones, and what you get out is oatmeal, and the, you can grind, depending on how close together the stones are, you can either get a fairly coarse oatmeal like that mm -hmm. and that would make a very nice um, Scots type porridge yes, yes. Um, or you can get a fine oat flour like that which you can use for all sorts of other purposes like making bread or um, thickening soups and stews and that sort of thing. Great stuff. Wow so it's quite a well, newish process to have the more of the, the whole uh, yes. oats as well which yeah. is my favourite way I absolutely okay. love eating my porridge like that um, and I love putting blueberries on top as well uh, yes, yes, um, yes. <laughs> and I know that our schools have been having a go at making porridge in their classrooms and uh, trying out different uh, toppings yes. to see which their favourite is so uh, let's go over to All States Primary School in Barry to find out what they've been popping on their uh, top of their porridge Today, I put apple and banana on my top, and they were my favourites. Oh, honey and apple and banana, absolutely. 
Hello, my name's Chloe and I found out porridge with lots of toppings very tasty. My favourite topping was bananas and raisins. Bananas and raisins on top of their porridge. Absolutely delicious. Let's finally go to Badly Primary now and find out what your favourite topping was on top of your porridge. My favourite topping was honey Honey, strawberry, and apple. That's yeah, quite a nice one. Seems like honey. And then somebody yeah, else yeah. likes herbs on the top of theirs. Yes, yeah, why not? Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> um, as I said, I like blueberry on the top of mine. How mm. do you prefer yours, Peter? Well, I like my porridge made with the uh, the, the coarse oats. Um, in the Scots style with a little bit of salt on it. Oh, salt just, a, it. just a touch of salt. Oh, well, that's an interesting one. I bet not many Different. of the children have tried that. Children, oh, maybe you want to give it, that a go. Yeah. Put a little bit of salt on top of your porridge. Yeah. It might taste completely different. A bit of a savoury bowl rather yeah. than a sweet bowl. Right, yeah. Well, now we know how we all enjoy our porridge. Let's find out a little bit more about how porridge gets from farm to fork. OT Porridge. From farm to fork. Although porridge can be made with lots of different grains, here in the UK we usually make porridge with oats. The new oat plants grow from seed and are generally sown in the latter part of the year, around the start of autumn. Once in the ground, the seeds have a few weeks to germinate before the weather turns colder. As the season changes to winter, the cold weather forces the germinated seed into a dormant state. This means it doesn't grow at all. This is so it can save all its energy to survive the cold winter months. Once spring arrives, the sun's warmth wakes the plant up and it begins to grow again. Here in the UK, oat plants grow well because they don't require hot summers. And they grow particularly well in Scotland because there's lots of rain and plenty of light. Depending on exactly when they were planted, the oats are harvested from midsummer onwards. The farmer checks that the oats are ready. Once he is happy, he will use a machine like this one, called a combine harvester, which works its way through the field cleverly separating the stem of the plant from the oats. The stems are pushed out of the back of the machine, like this, and the oats are then collected ready for the next stage, the milling. The lorry loads of oats arrive at a mill like this one. This lorry is carrying 30 tonnes of oats. That's the same weight as 10 large hippos. The oats are inspected and a sample is taken. This is to make sure they are good enough to be made into porridge. Next. The oats are tipped into the intake pit. Then transferred to large structures called silos. This is where the oats are stored until they enter the mill. Once in the mill, the oats go through a series of machines that make sure they're properly cleaned and that all the bits of straw and other things we don't want to eat are removed. The oats are then hulled in a big drum like this one. Hulling removes the tough outer part of the oat, but these parts aren't wasted. They are used for animal feed, leaving the softer inside part, called a groat, for us to eat. The next step is to put the groats into a kiln, which is a bit like a big oven. The oats are heated up, which helps them to retain their quality. To turn the groats into porridge oats, they are cut into pieces and squashed using this machine. Finally, the porridge oats are bagged like this and then packed into boxes. They are then ready to be sent to a store for you to buy and enjoy for your breakfast.
children. We hope you enjoyed that. Give us a wave and a cheer in your classrooms if you enjoyed that video. Great that you're really enjoying this online field trip. As you can see, we've been rejoined by Richard. We've still got Peter with us here as well. We're back at the top of the mill, which is where the oatmeal that we saw that was being ground downstairs comes back up through in huge sacks ready for the grocer or the baker to collect to go and make something nice and tasty with. But it's a really unique way, Peter, isn't it, of how the oatmeal gets up here. You don't have to lug it up the stairs, do you? Would, would you like to see? We'd love to see it, yes. Take it away, right. So, down below we've got a sack of oatmeal waiting to come up. It's fastened to this chain. Chain goes around the axle. The axle's driven by the wheel. The water wheel's going around underneath. And watch what happens. Hey. Wow. <laughs> Everybody laughs. It's all the gear. It's all the gearing working and turning round. Yes. So powerful. Ma massive wheels. It's so great, and it does, as I said, save you lugging all the way up the stairs. Those huge bags. So I'm guessing they're very heavy indeed as well. It was built 175 years ago, and it was built to last, yes. good and solid. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's still here. The floor feels a bit rickety though. <laughs> <laughs> great stuff. So now the oatmeal's up here and gets collected. And it gets made into uh, lots of amazing products, doesn't it, Richard? We've got some of the products here that are made from oats in particular, haven't we? Yes, Sam, not just for oats, we can mix it and make muesli, uh, bread, oat cakes, uh, delicious homemade slapjacks, uh, oat cakes again, and of course, porridge. It's, it's very versatile products. Yeah, I'm sure there's quite a few uh, products here that the children didn't realise were made using oats as well. Um, we've got our porridge there. We're going to tuck into our porridge in a little while. Uh, the children, it's important to remember that porridge is a really good breakfast for us because it contains folate and zinc, which is important to keep our immune system healthy. Magnesium and phosphorus, which is good to keep our bones and teeth nice and strong. And iron as well, which helps to fight fatigue, so it gives us lots of energy as well. Well, we've learned so much. Our experts have been brilliant. I think we should get some questions for you now, though, if you don't mind. Okay, we'll go yeah, over great. to Greenway Primary School to see if anybody has some questions for Richard and Peter. Hello, my name's Gary, and my qu question is, how many types of porridges are they in the world? That's a really great question. So Gary would like to know, Richard, how many different types of uh, the porridge are there around the world? Oh, good question, Gary. Uh, probably hundreds, because it's got lots of different types of oats. Uh, and also, different countries, they'll eat it with maybe rice or corn or barley. So, so there's literally hundreds of different types of porridge. Great. Really great question. Let's go to Madley Primary School now to find out if Miss Morris's class has a question. Hello, my name is Ralph. I'd like to know how much money you'd make from a field of oats. Like to know how much money you can make from a field of oats. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> I guess it depends on how big or how small the field is, but um, there's a lot of complexity going into milling uh, the, the oats, so uh, it's great value for money. But yeah, I guess it depends on how big or how small. Great, really good question. Let's go to All Saints Primary School now to see if Mr. Williams' class has a question. Hello. Uh, our question is, which country grows the most oats and how many is that a year? That's a really good question. So, uh, Richard, which country grows the most oats and how many oats and how much oats oh, a God. year? Oh, that's very technical. Very good question. Uh, Russia, as you mentioned before, grow an awful lot of oats, but they're for, for arable oats, if you like, for, for cattle, etc. Um, for milling oats, it's, uh, the largest country probably is Canada, uh, and then followed by probably the UK as well. Uh, and that's actually thousands and thousands of tons, thousands of tons, an awful lot. Great, so some really good questions. What lands do oats grow on, like sand or grass? What's the best uh, land? Yes, okay, because they're a hardy crop, um, they, they love the, the wintry weather, so the sunshine, the rain, etc. Uh, they don't grow all very well on sand or rocky ground, they just like good soil, good, good drainage soil, so it's just the standard field. So. Really, really great, really great questions, children, as well. They've obviously been thinking a lot about what they've been learning today and before today with everything they've learned 
online. Um, thank you so much for taking part, children. Just one final question for both of you. What's the, fi- what's the uh, best thing about uh, your job? Ah, well, well I, love it when we, I love it when we uh, do some new developments for colleges uh, and we'll try different toppings or different flavors, whether it be chocolate or strawberry or fruit, all these different things, because you can eat it with almost anything. So I like tasting the different recipes. Mm-hmm. What about you, Peter? Well, I think when we have a group of school children come here and tour the mill and see all the things that you've seen today and they go away at the end of the day happy and smiling, really enjoy themselves. That's great pleasure. Yeah, well, hopefully all our children will do exactly the same because it has been amazing looking around the mill. Thank you so much. And so we thank you so much for taking part today. If you'd like to take part in our next online field trip, you can do that. It's on the 15th of October and we'll be learning about fragrance spices. And if you'd like to take part in a Farm to Fork Trail, everything you need to know is on our website. It really is lots of fun. Um, just look at the children that you can see on the screen right now. You can really get your hands stuck in. So get yourself signed up for that. But from ourselves here, Richard, Peter, and myself here at Bunbury Mill, it's goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Greenway Primary School. <laughs> Enjoy um, looking at all your different oats in the classrooms, children, and enjoy trying out some different toppings that you've learned on today's online field trip as well. Perhaps try out the salts. I'm going to try out the herby one as well. Mm. But I have my banana one now. <laughs> <laughs> Yummy. Mm. <laughs> Bye. Bye.